Alright, uh, this is take two, sponsored by Strix RC. Yeah, woo woo. Alright, any in depth, but you know. So the website you want is airfoiltools.com forward slash plotter forward slash index. I'll put all the links in the video. So anyway, you go here, you can select from a massive list of airfoils. As you select them, you go down here, click plot, and it'll change the shape. So uh, we can do this one. So anyway, you can uh, adjust your cord. Uh, the radius thing makes a cool squiggly line. I have no idea what it's for, but when you update it, it makes a spiral. It's pretty cool. So yeah, zero that out. So anyway, the only two you really need to worry about are the cord, that's how wide the wing is, front to back, and then thickness, that's how thick the wing is. So, or the airfoil is, I shouldn't say wing because it's not a wing. So if you go to 200%, you'll notice this thing gets wider. So, hey look, train aircraft. But anyway, we could do a speed wing, Oop, not five, that'd be tiny, 50%, real thin, go fast. So anyway. Once you get that, and you can just hit enter on those, you don't have to click plot. Go over here and you save the SVG image as text file. Save it to your computer. The next program you want, well that's not really a program, that one's a website, is this one is Inkscape. It's uh, basically an Illustrator program, all free. Um, you open it up, go up to file, open, and then I always uh, select the file because basically everything shows up so SVG there's those and this is our new one we have those are a couple of scrum looking before I started the video so open that I don't know why it minimizes it but anyway so you end up with this first thing I do is click that delete now here you can't just click it and delete because it goes away so what you have to do go up here in the corner and click this button and that allows you to select all the elements you'll see a dash line come up you can't just click the delete button here you actually have to go click delete even though it tells you you can um, so what I do is I just uh, shift and click everything the only one you want to leave is the red one that's your airfoil once you get that you just uh, save it it's saved as an SVG Alright, and then the final step, so you have that saved to your computer. I use Tinkercad because I'm cheap and I like free things. Uh, anyway, import. So you'll go choose file. All oh, this shit. Um, anyway, type in your airfoil. Um, the one I was working on was MH33. It's that one. Oh, that's the CSV. It does not work with CSV, so you can't import those into Tinkercad. Only those, STL, Object, and SVG. So, SVG file. Import. And you end up with that. So there's your airfoil. Exactly as it is on the website, exactly as it's been drawn by whoever, awesome aviation inventor, created this one. So, from here, um, drag in your roller so you can see what the dimensions are. 150 millimeters, which is what I had the cord set at. And then the thickness is 10. So, what I do from here, you set it however thick you want. I usually go to like 8 or so. And this is where you can get complicated or not. So, you can add like spar holes and whatever else. So, drop a cylinder in here. Resize it to 8, because that should be about enough to leave enough meat around it so it doesn't center it up. So, put that in there. One trick I've learned is when you go into your 3D printer application, whatever you use, um, set the top and bottom layers to 0, and then set your end fill to something like a honeycomb or some really uh, rigid structure. Um, outline perimeters like four or five um, that'll give it a nice skin maybe even up to ten um, get a little stronger so um, I looked for a part and couldn't find it uh, apparently I cleaned some of my basement um, so you turn off the top and bottom skins of the part when it prints and it'll just print the infill 
which if you use like a hex pattern or something like that that's uh, pretty rigid out of the box you should end up with a part that's rigid enough that you can sheet it with foam or however else balsa you know and that and then whatever holes you put in will have an outline around it so it'll be outlined nah, I use the cursor you know it'll be outlined and then the skin will be outlined and then all the rest of it will just be infill and you can play around with the percentages see how thick you want it how heavy you want it whatnot but yeah that's what I do um, I haven't made anything with it but I learned about it see so now that we have the file downloaded we are uh, see it here go into whatever this is uh, s3d so layers top layers zero zero perimeter shells yeah, let's do six uh, layer height point three because let's go fast um, done this yet in this one I used to use a uh, slicer when I started to learn this I just want to make sure everything else is good and uh, infill not rectilinear let's do full honeycomb uh, yeah we'll see what that looks like and we're going to print so you'll see got this honeycomb. I'm actually going to turn down the layers so I don't print this thing all day long. So, or the perimeters I should say. Perimeter shells, let's do three. And then infill, I'll turn it up to 25. That should be something better. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so you get this. You have your structure, the thing comes out pretty light. Um, you need to watch that this here is going to be weak, see where that's not connected. But for the purposes of this demonstration, it'll work. So, you know, you need to use the correct spar. So, you need like a 5 mil spar or something for this. Alright, so uh, I'll print this out and I'll show you the time lapse of that. Yeah, I'll be back probably once it starts printing. See ya. So, uh, there is the finished part. See, pretty solid.